Hey, everybody, and welcome into First Cornerstone Global Methodist Church here inside Cornerstone. Everything going on in the life of our church, and we're glad that you've joined us here today. Uh, Brett Pritchard alongside Coach Billy Coleman. I'll tell you, I'll Thank tell you. everybody Coach today. I float back and forth. I float back and forth. But uh, good to see you, Coach. Uh, glad to have everybody join us today. Uh, and, uh, again, last week, I uh, got a lot of people uh, that came up and talked about the show last week and loved the topic and loved kind of how we – Went into some some questions and really you know and I know yeah we, we want to talk about that maybe I wanted to start with that and I know I didn't say this to you before we went on there but uh, if you've got something I love that surprises. you oh well you know this may not be the biggest surprise but it's a <laughs> I know uh, but but you know we want to hear from everybody out there so you know want to come up with a way that people can send questions into it. I'm for it put yep. me down I think it's so, great I'm gonna yeah. write you now I'm not sure so, exactly how that looks but. Uh, I'm sure you do, but uh, I, I would be excited to do. Well, that. we need to we need to have people email us, uh, and uh, uh, and and we'll what we'll do is we'll probably push an email out where people can submit questions that we can go over here on the show. That's more. Uh, I, I love the interaction. You know, I think now that we're into into this show several months and uh has and it we've been, been that it's long been, been that long I it mean, seems like we just started it really. i know and yeah. then of course the shows go by so fast yeah so. i've leaned over a couple of times to, you know matthew and almost falling off my chair that doesn't <laughs> seem like it's been that long it doesn't but no. it, you know we've been rocking and rolling and it's here been for a fun while. i gotta say it it's been so much fun it has and i think <laughs> we're just getting started so i think that's the cool thing but uh we we hear so, so much from from all of you out there and uh, and we appreciate that, and, and and we wanna we wanna hear more. Uh, we we don't have all the answers by no no stretch, and uh, you know we wanna be informative here. We wanna make sure everybody knows first and foremost what we're doing here at this church in Alexander City, and 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 how you can become involved if you'd like to become involved with our church, or if you just like to uh, tune us in to to hear Coach's message every week and uh, to kind of talk about you know, some, some talking points there. But we, we would love the interaction. Uh, we don't really have an, a, a way that people can call in on this show uh, because we're not live. But uh, we would love to, to be able to have you guys submit some questions uh, or maybe some like topics. Fun. It is. I mean, yeah, and then we could yeah. pick – you and I could pick the topic and the questions that – that we, we want to go on. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, and then we'll throw the other ones away. No, hey, I'm just we're kidding. We're going to answer the hard ones, aren't we? I, I, we're going to give I, it a shot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out whatever we have in the bowl. I and mean, we may do it Ooh, right here on the, okay. right there on the yeah. show. So, okay. uh, and we won't look at them. No. Let's we make won't. a commitment. We won't okay. look at them before the show. We won't cheat. We won't That's going to be tough, my That's man. That's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. And, and look, it, it, it'll probably single me out on a lot of stuff that I don't know, but uh, I'll give it a try. It'll I'm, be a I'm team working, approach. I, that's fine. I think right. we can we can piggyback off I, that. I'm so. looking forward but to But anyway, it. I wanted to kind of start with that. I think, uh, uh, you know, from from the comments that I've heard and the people I've talked to, um, huh. we want to we want to hear some more from you guys out there. And I, I think last Sunday, or, or not last Sunday, last week's show kind of propelled our conversation with that because – you and I kind of went off we the did. cuff a little bit last mm -hmm. sun, last week and yeah. uh, and discussed some things that we felt like people out there may be having those same questions. And exactly. we know that they have those same questions. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that's you know, a good it's, idea, Bri. I appreciate you thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, so, you know, we're going to try to mix it up and, and keep it fun here. Uh, you can always keep up with us uh, at cornerstone-fgmc.org. You can see that at the bottom of the screen, that, that website. Uh, Facebook is a great place to keep up with us, to watch our sermons and, uh, you know, catch those. If you weren't able to be there live, you have the Green Street service and the Arbor services that are archived there on Facebook. They're also archived on the website as well. And um, a lot going on, and uh, we'll continue to uh, pass along basically a calendar of events on this show of what we have coming up over the mm -hmm. next several weeks and months ahead. And Coach will blink and it'll be it'll be Thanksgiving and then it'll be Christmas because oh I mean goodness. look at it man we're halfway through September almost already I that I just it, it's been a ton of fun it's been not just here it's been fun in the church and uh, <clears> things <throat> are moving and we're in the fall of the year and people are centering back I right. think after their vacations we got things we got, got, things, we got a youth building on. being built. 
Like, I, hey, Brett, you know, uh, Wednesday at 445, Chamber of Commerce is going to ta take our picture, I think, you know, for the new church. Awesome. And uh, everybody's invited to come and be a part of that picture. But uh, there's just all the time there's what something going on. What time is that? On. I know that. That is 445. Wednesday. Okay. Now, I know we're cutting this show. Well, on I mean, Tuesday, as soon as so, you see this show yeah, on Wednesday, you right. can get to the church. Yeah, I that, believe yeah, you'll have time to get right. there. And, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll pass that along too. And uh, anybody that can be there to be part of the picture, that would be. That and would then be stay in a, in, and eat well, okay. for a meal, but you're going to have to turn it in. <laughs> we got to have. That's <laughs> yeah, the you you Maybe I shouldn't have up. said that. You couldn't the show The secretary, you. if she'd have been you're watching, about get, you're about have to get passed in trouble. out. Yeah, you're about to get in trouble. So <laughs> I um, am in trouble. Hey, let, let's talk about the, the Wednesday night meal. It's going so so well mm -hmm. that, uh, again, we, we've had a price increase uh, <laughs> up to $7, but, but, it, but it's warranted because there's more people there. There's more food having to be prepared. <laughs> Uh, it, it just it's, it's part of that. And, and let me say this about our great uh, partners here on this show, uh, the, the ones that are so kind to, to sponsor the show. That money goes toward that Wednesday night meal to help keep that price as low as possible. It does. So, it does. Uh, there, there's a lot that goes into it. So I know everybody looks at it from a standpoint, well, man, you know, it didn't take them long to go up two bucks on the, on the plate, but well, but it, it is what it is on that. Yeah, I can. I, <laughs> and there's a great reason for that right. because the the money that comes from this show is set. <clears throat> it doesn't go up. No, it's well. It's, we're having more people than we ever dreamed. I mean, we're dreamers, but uh, there was a hundred and fifty five people that signed up for this. Well. The total price that we're paying goes up, but the contribution that inside Cornerstone makes stays here. Right. All we did, and you're, I mean, you're getting about a thirteen dollar meal from the generals, honestly. Or maybe more than for, that. Or maybe, or maybe more, than more than that for seven dollars. That's what we're talking about. I mean, it's a great deal, but all of the the, the price increase was because so many people are coming. And it's great. We have to get out extra tables and chairs. That's that's what you want. That, yeah. that was the whole goal of this. And, um, you know, filling the fellowship hall yeah. up to the point where you may have to find somewhere else yeah. to go at some point in time. Then you go to three Bible studies if you like. Right, We've got right. children's choir. We've got youth choir going on. There's a, a variety of things to do afterwards if you want to make Wednesday night uh, quote, unquote, semi-Sunday night thing. There you go. You can do it. Well, since we're in the first segment and we're pretty much kind of going through the gamut of all the updates of what's going on in the church, uh, we'll just keep it going. Uh, uh, the the youth building's coming up uh, very fast. Uh, I mean, it, <laughs> that's, that's I mean it looks like, you know, when we were looking at the property in, a couple months ago when we were talking about uh, the, the goal was November 1 to be in that building, we all kind of thought, let's be honest, well, that's a little bit lofty of a goal, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it is right there. I mean, it, I don't know that how lofty that is. And, and I want to say something else about that here in just a second. But uh, the building's going up. Uh, I mean, it, it, it the weather has cooperated. Oh, that's true. Tremendously yeah. because it's been, now it's been burning hot. But that's what yeah. you get in the, the south. And, and yeah. you know, summers are either one or the other. You either get the monsoon season where it rains every <laughs> single day. Yeah. And it feels hurricanes. like you're in, yeah, hurricanes and tropical <laughs> storms. Or it's dry as a bone. And we've kind of been in a dry as a bone season this year. We have. That's great for yeah. construction people. Oh, Because yeah. their projects, yeah. even though it's hot, they, they, they don't have any weather that impedes their progress. So they, they've been able to get out there and get that done. And I, I want to say this. I know you want to add some stuff about the youth uh, facility. But um, the current youth that are in uh, the church right now went over and the children went over. Mm -hmm. And they put Bible, Bible verses. They wrote them on the... On, on the you know the interior and studs. the studs and all yeah, that stuff yeah. and I did too by the yeah, way yeah there you go uh, <laughs> and you know my my daughter sent me a picture of them doing it in a That's little group beautiful, isn't it? it is it's awesome but you know that 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 building is yeah. already blessed uh, tremendously yeah. uh, but I know you wanted to say well, maybe something about the facility well I'm sitting at Chick Fil A and uh, someone that doesn't go to our church but a great lady walks right. by she said Billy said. In my lifetime, I've never seen a building go up so fast as I, that you've built in your building. And I, I said, I agree. Uh, God must have a night crew that comes down. These angels come down. Because I'm telling you, 
every time I'd walk by there, every day I'd look at it and say, right. where, how did they do that? <laughs> you know? And, you know, to be honest, I've ridden by a bunch and never seen anybody out there working. I'm <laughs> well, like, I mean, I'm, I'm not, it it's, not a, it's not a cut on anybody. <laughs> I'm just saying, I've ridden by and it's like, well, there's nobody out there right now, but my Lord, they're getting, Somebody's been there. They're getting something done, buddy. Uh, they're doing it when nobody's it's looking. It's in the sure. dry. I, it's, I mean, and, uh, it's crazy. You know, I know that we were worried about some wet weather last week, and yeah. they were at right. that point where they were trying to get it in the dry so yeah. they could get going. But they, I'm it's, telling you, man, it's it's unbelievable. It's been in fast forward. Yeah, and the kids are just and David Han and the kids and well, that's going to be you wait till David Han get some here in about a month. <laughs> I mean, we'll give him a hard we'll time. Have to, he'll, we'll have to have the whole show. I mean, it, he'll he'll be so excited, but he, you know. You literally can look at David's face, and you know we talked yeah. about him when the last time he was on with us. You know the the pure joy and excitement, and and the want of having a facility for our youth. Because w- before the split uh, of the church, we did, you know, mm-hmm. and we had it, that, and you know, there was so much work and effort and all that went into that. And you know, when when the split came, that property went with Trinity, and uh, and it was like a void for the kids sure. here, and it was oh, like, yeah. man. You know, so immediately people got to work and said, well, we're going to build our own facility here and, mm-hmm. and give them an opportunity. But I know we're up against our first break. We come back, we'll keep talking about this, but we got a lot to cover today. I don't think we're even going to touch the surface, but that's a good thing. Fun. It is going to be fun. Stay tuned. More to come right after this. Hi, this is Brian Bice with Bice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with the service department second to none. Bice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Bice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Whether it's Lake Martin, Lay Lake, or Logan Martin, boaters from all over the state of Alabama come to Alex City Marine. Just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. Because it's worth the drive. With the best deals on unbeatable Suzuki outboards, Manitou and Landau Tritunes, and a great pre-owned inventory while they last. Alex City Marine is the pros the locals know. And no matter where you're from, when you're here, you're local to us. Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. AlexCityMarine.com. Medicine Express Family Pharmacy, located conveniently at the corner of Airport Drive and Highway 280 in Alexander City, offers friendly service, convenient drive through service, and can answer any questions on prescriptions and vitamins. Local family owned with 30 plus years of pharmacy experience, they also offer compounding services which includes personalized hormone replacement, therapies, and pain gels, and they accept most insurance and discount cards. Go see them today at Medicine Express Family Pharmacy. Amanda Scroggins with REMAX Around the Lake will cover every inch of Lake Martin's 880 miles of shoreline to find your family's dream home. Amanda's experience is top-notch, and she is consistently a top-10 REMAX agent in the state of Alabama. Her love for her clients is sincere and from the heart. Call her today at 256-749-6634 or visit her website, amandascroggins.com, today. As your State Farm team, we will be there for you with the financial strength to deliver on our promises. Service, that's a sure thing. You can think of us as your good neighbors who help protect what's important to you. We're here when you need us the most. You can call us 24-7 to get answers to your questions, file a claim, or see if we can find you more ways to save. We have many coverages and many discounts. We can help protect more areas of your life and find every discount you qualify for along the way. Please call us or visit 2048 Cherokee Road for coverage you can count on. Welcome back, everyone, to the show. And, again, uh, Coach, it was good to, in the first segment to t- talk about, man, everything that's going on right now, and there's a lot. And we didn't get to near all of it. We didn't we didn't scratch the surface. Well, that's good because we got three more segments. Well, well you, you always <laughs> ask for about two or three more segments. So, I know. That's but, true. Uh, but, but, you know, you look at the, the youth, so I, don't, I wanted to finish with that. Yeah. Uh, November 1 is – that that's going to be man, that's going to be phenomenal if if we do get yeah, and the youth get in that building by November and uh, and I know that's going to be, be a great cel- Christmas. Well, it's going to be a celebration. It's going to be a celebration. Yeah. So, uh, any other since we'll we'll kind of carry this over into the second. Any any other announcements or any kind of 
uh, events or, or things going on that, that everybody needs to know about. Hmm. Cornerstone Women will have their first meeting in the Arbor. This is a new organization for the women of the church. And uh, th that, that's going to be tomorrow, I want to say, Brett, 10 o'clock. Might ought to go to the website to make sure I'm true, but I, I think that's going to be at 10. So that, there's always something going on, but right now it's just kind of handling handling, <laughs> handling what yeah. we're handling right now. And it's exciting. A lot of new faces are coming, and uh, just – I, I, you're right, it's going to be a celebration, but it's going to be super big. And people, I think they think, well, you get the youth center, you get to use the youth center. Not not all that. You also get to use the Arbor now for maybe some children's activities that are going on, and it just it kind of expands everything. Right. You know, and, and so it's going to be great. And uh, thank, all thanks to God, and let's keep our focus where it needs to be. Because there's a force <clears throat> out there in this world, and he's not for what the churches of any of us are doing. And well, so we got to be prepared for the world. <laughs> well, I, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. I want to shift into uh, your message from, from oh. this past Sunday. And um, one of the things you said this past Sunday is you were speaking at uh, Worship on the Water, and you were able to tell the story about our church. You were able to you talk about, you know, a church that's on fire for, for God and, and, and doing things, mm. you know, uh, by the book. And when I say by the book, by the Bible. By the you know, book. By the book. <laughs> but, but I, I, again, I think <clears throat> that kind of led into your sermon. And, you know, we had communion this past Sunday. And ironically, I, as I'm sitting there listening to what you're saying, it brought back, you know, thoughts on our show the past week when I brought up about the Lord's Prayer and teams and in the locker room, and, of course, I use the sports analogy. That, that happens a lot between both of us sure. on this show. But the, the just the fact of going through the motion of saying the Lord's Prayer before you go out on the field, <sighs> coaches get up there and they give their speech and they go, all right, everybody up, let's do the Lord's Prayer and let's get out there and hit the field. And it's like, all right, let's hurry up and get through this so we can get out there. And, and again, I got it, a good story it's on the perspective, one. the the – it's the right that they have the, the the best interest at heart, but maybe not the right way of going about doing right. the delivery method. Maybe not the because you shouldn't hurry through. It should be more sacred than that's where I guess that's where I'm going. And that's the purpose of the message. You're right. That, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, I mean, yeah, I know. Well, if you're in a hurry, <laughs> would it be better just to? I mean, you want to pray and do it, but. I think it almost takes away from the sanctity of what you're doing. You know, there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians <clears throat> that I mentioned that tells us that there is actually required preparation and and confession <laughs> before you take communion. Right. And it's something that would – can I tell my story on the Lord's I Prayer? Want, I want to hear I, it. Yeah. I, I'll try to condense it. But it's embarrassing for me because when we went to Phoenix City on this particular Friday night, uh, of course, you got Jeremiah Castile playing over there, <laughs> tackling us for no gain at the line from the safety position. And uh, we get our tails wheeled. I mean, we get our tails wheeled. Well, guess what? I'm the defensive coordinator. So the 30 to nothing or 35 to nothing scorer, I'm, I'm moping around. I'm pitiful. So we go out to the middle of the field, and we were one of the first schools, Benjamin Russell was, back in the late 70s uh, and into the early 80s, that started the Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm, I'm sure we weren't the only or the first ones, but nobody around here did it. Right. So we went out there and kneeled down, and we said the Lord's Prayer in, at Phoenix City's field. And I mumbled through the biggest mess. You, I mean, I'm just, I don't even know what I was saying. I read, get, and I thought, you're right, Brett. Let's get off the stinking field. Yeah, I'm ready to go. And I, I didn't pray a word of that prayer in a minute. We got up, and we started going off the field. If I'm lying, I'm dying. And you know that Phoenix City's are pretty rough place. It, it is. And back in the late oh, 70s well, well, and early 80s, oh, it's definitely. their, their homes, their home side gave us a standing ovation for saying the prayer. Wow. And, then, you know, I was walking off the field, and I looked up in the stands, and I saw that. <clears throat> and God said to me, 
do you get it yet? I mean, how long is it going to take you to understand what we're, what we're trying to do here? And, yeah, I took it for granted. And that's what the message, the message was on. Don't do that to the communion service. Right, right. Because Jesus, that, that is symbolic of the death of Christ for our sins. The, the, the lamb, the blood that was on the signpost uh, in, in the Jewish times when they left Egypt and were free, that blood is from the Lamb of God for our hearts, the signpost of our hearts, so that the death angel passes over us and we can have a relationship with Christ. <clears throat> How dare I go up to the uh, altar and take communion with not regarding what that stands for? I think there's something that, that we all battle in society now with social media and, and everything that we do with technology. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of words that... that are used a lot in entitlement and privileged oh, and and yeah. again i think we wake up every morning and i say we because I, I i group myself into this and we take for granted a lot of the nice things that we have that oh, God, are yeah. that are just at our our disposal like like we should be i mean it's expected that i get this not yeah, that i deserve I'm, it yeah exactly <laughs> I, I think that goes along with the the message that you had with communion too, it, with Christians is, you know, we just go, okay, on the first Sunday, every, you know, month, we're just going to go up here and take this piece of bread and dip it in this cup and go back and sit down, you know, yeah. and we're going to be robotic about it. And we're just going to go back and do it again. And Hey, we know next month we're going to do it again. And, and you know, on month, communion Sunday, we get out late. I don't think I'll go this Sunday. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just thought, you know, right. that goes to tea time. Oh, you yeah. got that going on. So <clears throat> I think when you look at it from society as a whole, and, and I hear stories that my mom, you know, tell me about her dad, my granddaddy that I never got a chance to meet because he was, he had passed on before I, I was born, but he was a, a small church preacher, and that's going to go into the next segment of what we mm. want to talk about yeah. uh, with smaller churches versus maybe mega churches and all that. But how, you know, there was a, I guess, a pride to showing up on Sundays in your Sunday best, taking advantage of, mm. of, of the, I, I want to call it a ritual because it is a ritual. But being engaged and involved in, in the so mm. much so much thanks involved. And I'm not saying that we don't do that nowadays, but mm -hmm. we are so distracted by so many other things. There Good weren't point. near the distractions that were going on <laughs> back then no. that there are now. Well, Sunday afternoon she drove and visited your grandmother. Right. My grandfather. Well, you and I both love Andy Griffith, so we talk about a lot of Andy that Griffith. That episode, I, yeah. I, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, don't be in a hurry. And, All right. You know, they, and then what did they end up doing? Well, they ended up having, having a concert, concert. Here and everything fell apart, and they tried to do it all. And um, and then the preacher comes back by and goes, man, y'all look so relaxed. That's the one where it's Barney so says to Gomer, yeah. Gomer, get under there with those with spiders, spiders and get to working. <laughs> But, you know, there was always a theme of, of you know, something moral to all the, yeah. the episodes. And, and, again, it was a great. It was. But it's, that. that episode was way ahead of its time. It was. Because wow. it really was a snapshot of what we go through today. That's right. And I think we all get in a habit of, of, of being in a hurry to just do everything, mm -hmm. whether it's to pray or whether it's to go through the communion just line or whether yeah. it's to get to church on two wheels Good. because you can't yeah. get everybody up on time and, and you're rushing and everybody's... Yeah. I remember Todd Henderson doing a message when he was here mm -hmm. and he was talking about putting on your church face when you walk into church. <laughs> That's good. He yeah. said, we didn't want to see our family five minutes before we got here. Everybody was screaming at each other, mad, <laughs> hollering, putting the women are putting makeup on, yeah. dragging something out the door. Tie and, your and, shoe. And, and as soon as you open the door of your car, everybody's hey, just all smiles. Yeah, hey, we got good. everything together. Everything's just that's all roses. Point. So, but, but putting on your church face, it, again, uh, a lot of times – it doesn't really show mm -hmm. what what's going on in your life. You, you and, know that phrase, you owe me? Right. If we say that to God, we might get a response that says, <laughs> no, you owe me. Right. <laughs> because uh, Jesus paid a debt we can't repay to us. Uh, no doubt about it. But, yeah. but I think uh, in going back, and we can carry this over into the next segment too, 
Uh, you did a, a really good sermon on Thank communion. You. Really never have heard a different. service on communion. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's talked about. And the and Passover. Then, well, yeah, yeah and, but, right. but talking about the Passover and what the relevance is behind yeah. everything that goes in. The unleavened and why, bread. And why, yeah, the unleavened bread. That's and why pretty it's, good. Why yeah. it's called Passover. That's you know, right. You know, passing the over the angels. house. That's right. You know, a lot of people have asked that. And, of course, in the past, I haven't had an answer for that. I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, <laughs> so you go back and you do yeah. a little reading and you find out that, you know, the, the blood on the on the, on the the post, the mm -hmm. lamp post, they, the death angel passes over right. the house. And, you so, know, when the, uh, if I got one little point no, here. Yeah. When the, Israel's, uh, the Israelites leave and they're free, they don't have time to put yeast in their bread. Right. So they have to take the unleavened bread with them. They don't have leavened bread. And, of course, God talks about that. And it wasn't long after that that yeast became a symbol for sin. How about that? So the Passover and the Last Supper that Jesus conducted had unleavened bread. And basically, get the sin out. Jesus didn't have any yeast in his bread, yeah, yeah, bread yeah. that he offered and it's a beautiful story it's, it's a great it's story, a great story. Yeah. we'll keep talking about that and, and a lot more when we come back stay tuned thank you hi this is brian bice with bice motors with our all-star lineup of dodge trucks jeep suvs and chrysler cars we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience our sales team offers competitive pricing and we back up all sales with the service department second to none bice motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles visit bice motors at 2133 cherokee road in alexander city Whether it's Lake Martin, Lay Lake, or Logan Martin, boaters from all over the state of Alabama come to Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama, because it's worth the drive. With the best deals on unbeatable Suzuki outboards, Manitou and Landau Tritons, and a great pre-owned inventory while they last. Alex City Marine is the pros the locals know. And no matter where you're from, when you're here, you're local to us. Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. AlexCityMarine.com. As your State Farm team, we will be there for you with the financial strength to deliver on our promises. Service, that's a sure thing. You can think of us as your good neighbors who help protect what's important to you. We're here when you need us the most. You can call us 24-7 to get answers to your questions, file a claim, or see if we can find you more ways to save. We have many coverages and many discounts. We can help protect more areas of your life and find every discount you qualify for along the way. Please call us or visit 2048 Cherokee Road for coverage you can count on. Amanda Scroggins with Remax Around the Lake will cover every inch of Lake Martin's 880 miles of shoreline to find your family's dream home. Amanda's experience is top notch and she is consistently a top 10 Remax agent in the state of Alabama. Her love for her clients is sincere and from the heart. Call her today at 256-749-6634 or visit her website amandascroggins.com today. Medicine Express Family Pharmacy, located conveniently at the corner of Airport Drive and Highway 280 in Alexander City, offers friendly service, convenient drive through service, and can answer any questions on prescriptions and vitamins. Local family owned with 30 plus years of pharmacy experience, they also offer compounding services which includes personalized hormone replacement, therapies, and pain gels, and they accept most insurance and discount cards. Go see them today at Medicine Express Family Pharmacy. Welcome back, everyone, to Inside Cornerstone. We were talking about uh, this past Sunday service um, and, and talking about the ritual of communion. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it did mean more this week to me after hearing a message about it. Not that it not that it, it should take a message to, for you to be more engaged in, right, in what you're doing, but, yeah. but it did. It's kind of like, okay, can, can we all stop for a minute and just – Think about why we're doing what we're doing. And, I, again, right. this yeah. kind of goes back to the same theme that we've been talking about now for two weeks. You know, engage in what you're doing. Don't rush through it. Don't don't just take it for granted. I know that's kind of the words we've used mm -hmm. last week and this week. But uh, but when you went up there and, and you and you received communion, it did, at least for me, that – I was I was more in tune to why we were doing. Well, what thank we were you. Doing, so. That was the purpose, and I was I mean I do it a lot. You know, I just preaching <clears> to me, and 
there's a lot of people out there kind of like me. <laughs> you well, know, we I mean, we're all have the same right. kind of temptations and stuff like that, but I appreciate that. There's some other things that we want to talk about before uh, we get done today. Um, you and I were talking about <clears throat> small churches versus mega churches. And it's an interesting topic. It, it, it is a very interesting topic. We want to talk about it a little bit. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I think the important thing uh, at the end of the day is how you decide you want your relationship to be with God. Mm -hmm. Every, we're all responsible for us at right. the end of the day. I'm, right. I'm not going to be able to go to heaven for you and you for me. Right. So you, you have that. And I know in bigger cities, there are, you know, maybe not as few options. You know, there's fewer options as far as smaller environments, but uh, maybe it's more larger churches that maybe. you that you have to go to. But um, but even in the rural areas now, you're you're seeing people, and we've seen it for quite a while. And I don't know if Highlands is is called a mega church or not. But anyway, me, they've got multiple campuses around, and and I know a lot of people that go there that that live in Birmingham, that live in Auburn or whatever. And that's great, and they mm -hmm. seem engaged and all that. But then I also see, you know, families that yearn to have that that hometown, that smaller church environment. Right. Uh, they feel like Dude. that's their way to engage more. That's right. Well, <clears throat> this is a topic that's kind of close to my heart because I know a lot of people in both sides of this this subject. I've spoken in mega churches. I've spoken in smaller churches. Um, ultimately, I think it's what's in your heart. You, we, and I don't. You can be talking about football. You sure. can be talking about your marriage. I mean, your kids. What is in your heart? And God can. I, at one o'clock, after we finish our Green Street service every Sunday, I drive to a little church called Hatchet Creek. Had I pulled out of going to Hatchet Creek, they would have had to shut the doors. They would have and that, that, I couldn't have took that. So I go down there at 1 o'clock, and I, I share. And it's going to be anywhere from 6 to 12 people there. And I do a message, and we sing some songs. We had a fish fry there one afternoon afterwards. And it is just as meaningful to those people as it is to the people that have 1,000 <clears> people <throat> at their worship service. It's what is in your heart. And I have friends that are mega pastors. They're friends of mine. And here's my statement to them, and I make it now. And then I'm going to make a promise after that. I go to a mega church pastor, and I say, you know, if you can pull 10,000 people that don't know Christ to your church, I am your biggest fan. Do that. I'm behind you 100%. But if you're going to bleed 12 other smaller churches because you have a larger youth group, you have more financial support to offer programs that will be meaningful for the various people, and if you close those down, I'm not your fan. And I'm, I want to say this to everybody watching. We make this point a lot of times. We are not out there to get people that are involved in their church to come to Cornerstone. We want you to go to whatever church you go to and support that church. If we have something going on at Cornerstone and you can come and enjoy and be a part of that, I promise you this, we will not try to get you to start going to Cornerstone. Go support your church. I mean, this is big to right. me. And you can worship God in any size church if your heart is right. Yeah, I, I think what, what you just said is, is a lot to process in the fact that we're seeing in, in rural communities these smaller churches go away more and more every year. Mm -hmm. And... And there's a lot of different reasons why. Maybe right. there's not enough people there. That's right. Like you just said, you, you go and share at Hatchet Creek, and if you were to say, I, love it. I, <laughs> and I, I can't come anymore or I wouldn't, you know, I'm unable to be there, what would happen to that church? It yeah. would probably dissolve. And you just, know, There's not many speakers out there. Right, right. You know? But then on the flip side, what you said about, you know, these mega churches. You know, are you bringing new people That's to the table? It. That's are it. You, are, yeah. are you bleeding out? Other, but again, I think I'm, I'm gonna play the other side of the fence for a second. Sure. If I'm if I'm a a younger family, yeah. and I live in a rural area, and I've got kids, and I go to that church, and we worship, and we're loyal, 
but they don't have anywhere to go on Sunday, then as a parent, mm, yeah. I'm going to look at – I mean, it's, it's not facilities. Look, although let's just be honest about it. People like to go where they have – Nice shiny. I mean, this just they like just arbors. They just no, they just like <laughs> yeah. nice you new know? shiny things. Yeah. Human beings like that, sure. And so uh, they, that that gets them attracted. So maybe that's not for the right reason. But right. but going, let's let's take that out of it and say, okay, I'm that family, young kids. I want a chance for them to grow up in a and be involved in a church where they've got a thriving youth program mm-hmm. where they can feel part of mm-hmm. something. So there's multiple different ways to look at yeah, it. Yeah, I got a good example of that. We had our uh, had our big retreat down at Panama City that, that weekend. Discovery. Discovery. We had kids from other churches right. come and be a part of that and go. And I can promise you, none of their parents or them were encouraged to come to Cornerstone. We were able to offer something that uh, they couldn't have experienced otherwise. Right. And and so I, I might get in trouble. You know, we're having a pastor parish meeting tonight. Okay. Uh, they might get rid of me. I don't know. But here's <laughs> oh, our goal. Uh, we want to have a lot of people, but we want to worship like a small church. We, 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 we have this time where we go around and uh, – you know, shake other, him. Greet each other. And well, you almost have to get out a whistle and blow it and say, <laughs> will you please get in your seat? You know, we've been doing this. We love the fellowship. We love staying after the service is over. That's the qualities. We want to be friendly and welcoming when you come to get to know you. I love to go up to everybody and introduce myself. We're glad to have you. That's important. Well, one of the Some biggest- of the Big old churches, you don't, you don't have the personal relationships. Well, have. I think that's. I, I can use a couple of examples. Number one, the 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 fellowship and sharing of. Yeah. Hey, we we get in trouble all the time, and when I was in charge of the Sunday school class for several years, I had to I had to kind of, I didn't want to say scold everybody, but then they get <laughs> in there mean. it. it at 30 minutes after, it's hard to get the whole lesson in. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's know, important. But, but we so try to, good. but we try yeah. to make it. You know, look, we want, we know everybody wants to stay around and share, but hey, can you be over here at least by 15 after so <laughs> yeah, we can get started? Right. Yeah, right, I mean, right. And again, there's different things going on, right. but that, but that's what that's what you want. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to have that engagement mm-hmm. after after you. And again, it goes back to. You shouldn't be so robotic about going to the church. Mm. It shouldn't be, oh, I show up at 9. I go to 9 o'clock service. Ooh, it's it's <laughs> 9 01. I've got to go. Yeah, I, I've got to. <laughs> uh, I've got to go to. I'm not even, I'm not even going to approach that. I'm not even going to approach that. Uh, and then you go to. Love you, Matt. Uh, that's Just right. Kidding. That's right. Not, Matt followed the line. It's like this. <laughs> but, you know, then at 9 01, you're in Sunday school till 9 50, you know, yeah. till, or. or 1001 to 1059 and then you go eat lunch and then you go yeah, i mean it's I, like I, I know you, i know yeah that that you're losing the whole point of what you're doing and i'll tell you something else when you go to green street right same thing True. laughing that well you can't get them to, to get back in there so <laughs> you think of a traditional services you know, you got this, it's kind of like what you're saying. You got this right. ritual going on. Hey, they laugh, we cut up, we right. have fun. They stay afterwards and talk and stuff like that. We want a friendly, engaging, personal relationship centered church. And it's not Green Street, it's not the Arbor, it's Cornerstone. That's right. It's and everybody. it's beautiful to see they're both the same, Brett. They are. They, and, they, they look the same with the people. And and we have the hour that's built in between so people yeah, can, can right, go right. do their small group. Mm-hmm. We call it small group. I'll still always call mm-hmm. it Sunday school. Yeah. But, uh, again, we're, I'll, I'll give you this, and I know you, you've – I've kind of given you a little heads up on this. We've – our Sunday school class, I counted 25 this Sunday. That's what and, I'm talking and, about. And, again, though, but we didn't have half – I mean, they were still – People Several out. that weren't there. Yeah. And we got to go find a new room. Let's do it. I mean, that's what we're going to do. I well, mean, we, we, either that or we're going to have people. Build sit, your room? We're going to have people sitting out <laughs> Hey, we'll be, we'll be out there <laughs> yeah. hammering and tearing out a wall. So, Isn't that a great hey, problem? We've done that before, too. We tore a wall out two weeks ago. That's right. And I looked in that class 
It, it's a huge room. It's monstrous. Right. And I looked in that class last Sunday, and I said, what? what? It, I started looking around. And hey, it, our class that is class right, was Our cool. class is right above that one. We didn't jeopardize yeah. the weight on that by taking that yeah. wall out, did we? Well, we'll make, <laughs> hey, we'll make it work. Praise the Lord. It is. Yeah, I mean, I again, go for it. but that that's that's what we're talking about yeah, is that right. going back to small churches, there's probably a lot of people out there that wouldn't view our church as a small church. We wouldn't. We no, wouldn't fall I, into that. I, I, I don't, I don't know. There's, so. there, there's not. It's not like we're classifying high school football teams. You know, seven A to one A. You got <laughs> okay. this many people that yeah. put you in seven A, then this That's many people point. put you in six. You know, I don't know. Teaching to each his own on what you view a small church right. is a small church to you less than four hundred or less than forty or you know, I, you all have your own yeah. opinions on that. But some would classify that mm -hmm. as a small church. And others would look at us as a big church. Maybe we should throw that out. Get rid of big church and small church and say friendly church. There you go. Welcome, well, welcoming is. church. Right. I praise God church that, that treats everybody the same. You I, know? I have never been to a mega church. So, but I will say this. But I've seen a lot of sermons, you know, yeah. via YouTube or whatever. But, and they get a bad rap. By a lot of people, yeah, because they, they go, well, there's no way they can be doing the right thing. Well, there we are passing judgment. That's right. That could be Good point. You you could be in that church, and that preacher be outstanding, stands for everything right. that, yeah. that God wants him to stand for. Yeah. Has fifteen thousand people in the congregation, and yeah. they're there and they're loyal, and then they break off and they do their thing. And you could have a small, tiny church not doing the right. I mean, you know, oh, there's just definitely. it is all about it's a heart. It is, but I think yeah. a lot of the the, I guess misperception goes along sometimes with those mega churches is that it is hard to grasp with all the money that gets talked about and all that yeah. stuff. They seems to garner the attention more than than Christ. Yeah, yeah. Because I think you said, and that's Sunday, a trap too. Well, that is a trap. You're, yeah. you're like we, you know, this is all about him not what we're doing i know that's, right. that's the second right so i gotta get out <laughs> stay tuned one final segment right after this <laughs> Hi, this is Brian Bice with Bice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with the service department second to none. Bice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Bice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Whether it's Lake Martin, Lay Lake, or Logan Martin, boaters from all over the state of Alabama come to Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama, because it's worth the drive. With the best deals on unbeatable Suzuki outboards, Manitou and Landau Tritons, and a great pre-owned inventory while they last. Alex City Marine is the pros the locals know. And no matter where you're from, when you're here, you're local to us. Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. AlexCityMarine.com. As your State Farm team, we will be there for you with the financial strength to deliver on our promises. Service, that's a sure thing. You can think of us as your good neighbors who help protect what's important to you. We're here when you need us the most. You can call us 24-7 to get answers to your questions, file a claim, or see if we can find you more ways to save. We have many coverages and many discounts. We can help protect more areas of your life and find every discount you qualify for along the way. Please call us or visit 2048 Cherokee Road for coverage you can count on. Medicine Express Family Pharmacy, located conveniently at the corner of Airport Drive and Highway 280 in Alexander City, offers friendly service, convenient drive through service, and can answer any questions on prescriptions and vitamins. Local family owned with 30 plus years of pharmacy experience, they also offer compounding services which includes personalized hormone replacement, therapies, and pain gels, and they accept most insurance and discount cards. Go see them today at Medicine Express Family Pharmacy. Amanda Scroggins with Remax Around the Lake will cover every inch of Lake Martin's 880 miles of shoreline to find your family's dream home. Amanda's experience is top notch and she is consistently a top 10 Remax agent in the state of Alabama. Her love for her clients is sincere and from the heart. Call her today at 256 749 6634 or visit her website, amandascroggins.com, today. 
Welcome back, everyone. Final segment here on the show. Again, want to thank everybody for joining us uh, here and uh, the comments that come in. Again, we want to. If you didn't, if you didn't catch the first part, I want to kind of go back and repeat. We want to start. Yeah, having, fix my fix my mistake for me. Oh well, I'm, yeah, well I'll I let had, you do that. It's on well, me. we filmed. No, you did. Well, there's there's something. There's a couple things I want to hit on. Right. Uh, yeah. Before we get, we filmed this show on Mondays, mm -hmm. so. We have to think about the first time it shows, which is on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and it shows on Wednesday through Sunday. So mm -hmm. sometimes we go, hey, tomorrow, and tomorrow's already passed. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> so I, the women's, yeah. uh, the Cornerstone women actually are going to meet on Tuesdays. Is on that, Tuesdays once a month. Once a month. So, so for by yet, the time you see this. It's gone. That's over. It'll be the next month. It'll be the next but month. But we'll make but, that work next time. That's right. So, yeah. but. but Good um, point. Good hey, point. I do want to, to to bring up one more thought on the small churches versus the mega churches. Again, we're not uh, by any means sitting here going, though they don't have the best interest of Christians at heart. Oh, if you no. go to a, a mega church, there's some great and ones. I, 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 right, and and I think it goes back to what you said a couple of segments ago. It's what's in your heart, and it's what your relationship is. With God, it's not based on what – it's really not based on the environment. I mean, you, you go to church to worship God, and, and I know it's important to be in an environment where you're comfortable, and that's why people choose, hey, I'm going to go to this church versus this or whatever. But um, there, there, there is room for every type of church. There's the yeah. small churches that are out in, in rural communities uh, versus the bigger churches, you know, maybe in the more urban communities and all that. Uh, you really just have to make a decision what's best for your family. And, again, I go back to that that example. I know there's people out in rural areas that it's not that community's fault. They may be in a little small nook, and they may have grown up in that church. Yeah. And now there's just not that many people that go it's, there anymore because – And it's just a nature of – That's right. So, but yeah. I want my child to be involved in a mm -hmm. youth program – with friends that they can learn about Jesus together, mm -hmm. so maybe that's why they choose. They don't. They don't choose to leave that church because they don't like it anymore. That's right. They're choosing it for better that's opportunities, right. and and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's exactly right. All right, right. so I will say this uh, before we close, and I know we got to do uh, your your parting well, points go here. Go for it. <laughs> Today, as we're filming this show, is nine eleven. So it sure is. Uh, so this is um, hard to believe that. Uh, it's it's been twenty over well over twenty years now uh, since the attacks on our our country and you know I was watching some things this morning um, and the news stations kind of go back and replay the footage and it, still to this day when you watch that footage it, it's still it's almost like it's it's a, it's a movie being played and you're like surely that didn't happen and, but there was one thing that was brought up this morning uh, I can't remember who said it. That majority of the people that are reg that are registering and enlisting in our military services now were not even born when the attacks happened, hmm. and that's and they were encouraging young people to go back and go down the YouTube rabbit hole or whatever mm -hmm. and watch documentaries on what happened on that day. Wow. And because I think it's important, you know, again, the further away you get from something, it seems like the candle burns out a little bit. It gets a little bit fainter and fainter. Mm -hmm. And again, there's not as much coverage here in 2023 as you had in 2005 or 2010, you know, just a few years after that event mm -hmm. happened. But I think it's important that we keep stuff like that in the forefront when, when these anniversaries come around because, um, again, that was a, the reason I bring it up, it's on 9-11, but we talk about a lot of divide in our country right now in 2023. We do. And I, I think it was um, uh, Trey Gowdy that said one of the things that stood out to him the most on that day as they went out on the steps of the capitals, Republicans and Democrats. Never forget it. Saw and, it. And sang, sang uh, God bless America. Arm in arm. Arm in arm and prayed. And, yes. And again, here's the thing. He said it shouldn't take a tragedy 
He said, why can't we just act like this all the time? Why can't we be for America all the time? Why can't we? It, and and, he, <laughs> and he was talking about that. And he goes, right. he goes now, he said, it's almost like it, it's gotten to the point where you can't even make it to the afternoon now before you're back at each other's throats. He said, you know, we were unified for a long time we were. after 9-11. Mm -hmm. He said, now it's like an event happens. We try to figure out a way to – blame the other side one side or the other for why that happened he said he said it just and it does he brought up a really good point that you should be able to go into the halls of congress or you should be able to to live in a city where you have different viewpoints on things but at the end of the day you come together and you're you're one you're you're right. you're either a right. christian or you're an american or you know however you want to whatever it is that you're looking at i just thought that was symbolic that we needed to because man that will live on. That was a major, to me, as big a day almost maybe as Pearl Harbor was. Well, I remember, we all remember where we, we were when that happened. I was a principal at West Point High School. I walked through there, and I heard the secretaries and stuff, and the counselor, they said, look at that. And, of course, at first, when the first plane hit the first tower, we thought it was a, a airplane crash. A small, Same, a small one, like a Cessna or something. It seemed yeah. odd. Uh, right. Uh, that's... Can you not miss that building? But uh, and then, but we all saw the second. We, did. we saw that second plane. Well, then we knew there was something going on, and right. the rest of the day transpired. I know at our school, I'm sure all schools did this. We just told all the teachers, turn on your TV. Most of them had TVs. Turn on and let's just watch this. It was literally American history. In the uh, and and it, the, it, everything about it was a first. And, uh, I, you know, I'd like a different set of heroes stepped up that day. Uh, we love we love taking our military heroes, and they just I put me first in that line. I love the two days that we have set aside, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Absolutely. for people that have defended this nation. But a new set of heroes, and I'm talking about firemen and policemen first and first responders, and who gave their life. Stories of them who entered the towers went up the stairs before it fell right. to try to save other people's life, gave their life. They never thought twice about for it. Fellow Americans. That's right. And you know, Americans, I mean, Alabamians loving New Yorkers, right? right. <laughs> California <laughs> loving Mississippi. I mean, the whole country literally came together and you know, that's what tragedies do to us. I don't understand it either. I do know this. The whole Old Testament talks about the, the people of Israel doing all fantastic, but it takes some kind of persecution or uh, uh, some uh, or empire from the north that come, the Babylonians come down and they defeat, and then all of a sudden, when that happens, you 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 start appreciating things, you start looking at things a little differently, and. Uh, the bottom line to it, Brett, and you may have a thought on it, is we're all about us. I, I is right. the word. You know, we're going to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And, of course, as you said earlier in the show, and we think we deserve it, but it's all about me. Well, now, when somebody comes in and tries to take some of the basic fundamentals away from me and you, all of a sudden, we become a little bit bonded. We're more a little more of a team. Right. And, and, and because somebody from the outside, I mean, we Americans think that our country is infallible. That's what the Roman Empire thought. Well, I think a lot of people felt like, Coach, that day up until then, my generation had not ever been to really war. Mm -hmm. And we knew on that day, we, we never thought, that our homeland could be attacked. Yeah, we we knew we that too good. we knew that we, yeah. we could go and, and yeah. go fight on foreign shores. Mm, right. But even in World War II, outside mm. of Pearl Harbor, right. the mainland of the United States had never been attacked. That's before. exactly right. And so it was a wake up call, I think, to a lot of people that hey, look, from this day forward, everything's going to be different. Our the way yeah. we travel, yeah. the security, and to an extent, it's still different. It, you know? No, it is. I yeah, think that absolutely. day changed our culture forever, and and yeah. how we look at things and all. But again, going back, 
I thought Trey Gowdy said it best. I mean, it shouldn't take tragedy no. for us to be able to come together. Nobody was out there screaming about denominations or whatever, uh, that you know, uh, inequities. Everybody locked arms and prayed. I got God. the – you know, the, oh, the, how about this? Here's the ultimate. Alabama and Auburn fans were together. That's right. <laughs> we thought that was impossible. Absolutely. Well, and you know, yeah. I, I think we've seen wow. – We've seen, you know, Alabama and Auburn fans in times of tragedy when t when the tornado hit Tuscaloosa, Auburn players went up there uh -huh. and helped clean up. You know, we, we want to act big and bad, and, and we want to say, I can't stand them and all that. We but still when, love when their other. brothers, sisters need help, That's right. we, we always show up. At God Club, bless so. America. Absolutely. So, yeah, our thoughts and prayers still to those families that were affected as they yes. met in New York and, you know, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and yeah. Pentagon today and read off those names again oh. for the 22nd year. In, in you know in a row mm -hmm. uh, that they've gone and, and that they live on. But so. families lost dear loved That's ones right. that day. That's right. What so. a day that was. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But again, thanks to everybody for for watching and listening. We'll be back with you this time again next week. We appreciate it. See God you next bless time. you. Medicine Express Family Pharmacy, located conveniently at the corner of Airport Drive and Highway 280 in Alexander City, offers friendly service, convenient drive-through service, and can answer any questions on prescriptions and vitamins. Local family owned with 30 plus years of pharmacy experience, they also offer compounding services which includes personalized hormone replacement, therapies, and pain gels, and they accept most insurance and discount cards. Go see them today at Medicine Express Family Pharmacy. Hi, this is Brian Bice with Bice Motors. With our all-star lineup of Dodge trucks, Jeep, SUVs, and Chrysler cars, we offer the area a team dedicated to making your next vehicle purchase a positive experience. Our sales team offers competitive pricing, and we back up all sales with the service department second to none. Bice Motors also offers the area's best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Visit Bice Motors at 2133 Cherokee Road in Alexander City. Hey everybody, I'm Brett. Billy. And I'm Matt. And we want you to join us each week for Inside Cornerstone. Coach, Matt, excited to have this show on every single day throughout the week leading up to Sunday. Jesus Christ is going to be glorified in everything we do. You won't just be listening to messages. You're going to be hearing about things going on in our church. And make sure you join us at our worship services, 9 and 11 o'clock. Join us each week right here on Inside Cornerstone on WAXC-TV. Whether it's Lake Martin, Lay Lake, or Logan Martin, boaters from all over the state of Alabama come to Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama, because it's worth the drive. With the best deals on unbeatable Suzuki outboards, Manitou and Landau Tritunes, and a great pre-owned inventory while they last. Alex City Marine is the pros the locals know. And no matter where you're from, when you're here, you're local to us. Alex City Marine, just off Highway 280 in Alexander City, Alabama. AlexCityMarine.com. As your State Farm team, we will be there for you with the financial strength to deliver on our promises. Service, that's a sure thing. You can think of us as your good neighbors who help protect what's important to you. We're here when you need us the most. You can call us 24-7 to get answers to your questions, file a claim, or see if we can find you more ways to save. We have many coverages and many discounts. We can help protect more areas of your life and find every discount you qualify for along the way. Please call us or visit 2048 Cherokee Road for coverage you can count on. Amanda Scroggins with Remax Around the Lake will cover every inch of Lake Martin's 880 miles of shoreline to find your family's dream home. Amanda's experience is top notch and she is consistently a top 10 Remax agent in the state of Alabama. Her love for her clients is sincere and from the heart. Call her today at 256 749 6634 or visit her website, amandascroggins.com, today. <laughs> 